guys. We got the new boat, the new wrap. We're gonna show you everything, do a full boat tour real quick. It's a 2024 921 Elite 2. And uh, I'll show you my truck here in a second too. It's a lot smaller than it used to be. So, I love this boat. This is a 921 Elite 2, like I said. I've been running this boat for a few years and we'll just start up front because a lot's changed up here for me. There's a lot going on too, honestly. I don't even know what I'm doing with all of it yet, but we're trying to figure it out. This has been a, a off season of learning and trying to get better at forward facing sonar. I feel like I'm decent at it. I've done pretty good in some tournaments. I've won tournaments because of it, but uh, I still feel like there's a lot to learn and it's kind of ever evolving, ever changing right now and I don't want to get left behind. I'm 37 years old, and when I was in the bag line at Table Rock for the Toyota Championship, I felt like the old guy, but I'm not gonna let that uh, change anything or slow me down. So, a lot going on up here, guys. Uh, I think the first thing you notice is trolling motor. And this is the new Power Pull Move. Super excited about this. I went with a 52 inch shaft, and I did that for a reason. Uh, number one, this is a super light trolling motor. It's the lightest trolling motor on the market. So it didn't add any weight, um, but it's gonna help me when the waves, you know, and the wind is, you know, making it rough out there where it's gonna keep my transducer, my forward facing sonar transducer, which is a Lowrance active target too. It's gonna help me keep it in the water. So I feel like that's really important keeping that uh, transducer in the water as much as possible and as much as you know i like to fish off the bank i feel felt like a 52 uh was the way to go and it's so easy to lift this trolling motor up i'll show you guys that at, at one point in this video but we have a 360 so still have the big rig bass in quick disconnect mount uh three hummingbird 360 power pole move 52 inch messing with this and a lot of people don't uh, put this transducer, scout mode, whatever mode you use, uh, perspective is Garmin, but a lot of people don't put it on a stabilized mount. So I'm actually trying it out with this. This is a fish obsessed mount, and this is on a 360. Uh, it's on the 360, you know, bracket or whatever shaft. And I'm trying to figure out if I like it like that or not. I thought it'd be cool to hit anchor mode and be able to still see a target that I'm throwing at it, at least with this, because uh, the trolling motor is obviously going to move a little bit and take the forward facing part away if you hit anchor mode. So coming down here, um, just again, to help keep my transducer, we got duck hunters. It is so cold out there. Hey, kudos to those guys. They're brave. It's freezing. There's ice all over the back of the cove here. Um, but again, to help keep the transducer in the water, uh, better, I tried to put it as far down as possible on the shaft, so it's all the way down here on the side of the head of the trolling motor. And again, guys, that's a long ways down, uh, but I can lift it up if I want to, if I want to get in some shallower water. So, power pull move, 360, forward facing sonar, scout mode, all that stuff. Yeah, moving back. I'll tell you guys, the reason that I run a 921 Elite 2 uh, is one, there, there's one main reason, not, I mean, all Phoenix boats are great. doesn't matter if you run a 721, an 819, whatever, you know, a PHX, but me personally, what I love about Phoenix is they have different options. And I love, guys know that have followed me for a while, they know I love this dual, um, dual box here on the center of the front, front deck. And it just allows me to keep lighter stuff in that front box, you know, rain gear, helmet, whatever, lighter gear in there. I keep all my tackle in here and I don't need the day box. A lot of people feel like they need that day box, but I'll show you real quick why I don't need the day box. And that's because I have a little sliding tray right there. So that sliding tray acts as my day box. I can put my bags of plastics right there, whatever I think I might use throughout the day. I'll just set it in there. And when I need a new bait, just lift the box up, grab it real quick, and my rods don't go over the side of the boat. I personally can't stand that, but again, it's all preference, guys. So 
That's why I do it. I have, um, I keep all my big bags of soft plastics in that far right rod locker. And I just know I have lots of spares over there if I need them. It's a lot of weight. I can take them out on game day to cut down on weight. But for practice, I load the boat. I get as much weight in here as possible just because you never know what you're gonna need in practice. So that's why, that's the main reason I run a 921 Elite 2. And I always run a 21 foot boat just because I love a big, big front deck. So moving back here on this boat, not much, you know, not much different than in the past couple years, heated seats, which I do love on a day like today. We're finally above freezing, I think. We're above freezing, aren't we? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. I, I guess it is like 29, but uh, I'm like shivering making this video. So uh, back here, I went to 10 foot uh, power pole blades for the first time ever. I'm really excited about that. I'm not going to lie because there's been so many times I'm like, oh, I wish my power poles would hold in eight feet of water. And you know, if you run eight foot blades or if you run tens, you know, the eight foot blades are about six feet and tens are right around eight feet. They're a couple feet less just because of where they actually sit on the bracket on the jack plate. But I'm really excited about this. So many times I wish my boat would have held in seven to eight feet of water. And anymore, you know, I didn't used to run them because you get up under docks and stuff like that and they get in the way or you get around trees, you know, up on the bank. I love to flip, believe it or not. That was one of the reasons I always ran eights is I'm like, man, I love to flip. But anymore, uh, you know, tournaments, everything feels like it's being one off the bank. And uh, I feel like, you know, this is a bigger advantage now. So, of course, we still have the 12 inch Atlas jack plate uh pow or the yamaha show 250 this is my ninth yamaha and phoenix i cannot believe i'm saying that that time has gone by so fast guys 2015 i guess i, I hope i did my math right there um 15 16 17 18 19 20 1 2 3 4 never mind this is my 10th yamaha phoenix so i didn't do the math right but I love this combination, Phoenix with the Yamaha. You don't see many of them out there. They're starting to get more, but one of the reasons I love it is just, of course, the reliability of this motor. It has never left me stranded. Now, nine full seasons, I've never been stranded by this motor. And to me, that is unbelievable. The only things that have happened have been my fault. Uh, hitting something, you know, a rock or whatever, I've hit I've had some things I'm not even sure what they are, but this setup, uh, the other thing I was going to say too, is just resell. I know, uh, you know, Yamaha, I see a lot of people say Yamaha costs like $1,500 more, uh, new when you go to buy one, but you're going to get all that money, if not more back because, uh, there's, you know, there's just not that many Yamaha Phoenixes out there. So if you guys are looking at new boats or even looking at used boats, I just sold my old one. Resale value is going to help you tremendously. So think about that. Back here, we got a little bit different setup this year. Of course, we got some tools on top. Got a little battery charger over here, uh, but it looks like a lot going on, but there's really not that much going on. I'm going to show you real quick. Two 36 volt Miller, Miller Tech. Uh, 60 amp hour batteries. I have them on this switch over here. So they're actually not in parallel. I learned this little trick from Dakota eBear. I thought this was pretty cool. If I have a bad battery, it's not gonna pull. Um, and I don't expect to get a bad battery, but you just, in our situation, you never know. So I wanna you know, protect myself. But if I had a bad battery, I would not have to worry about it sucking any power from the other one. So I can just come back here when I want to switch batteries, I can go to trolling motor battery two, and I have I know I always have one brand new full battery charged at all times. I have all my electronics running off of this 190 amp hour uh, 12 volt, so that's strictly for electronics, and then this is a backup 135. So I really have like, I don't know, what is that? 325 amp hours, which is crazy amount but uh, I'll take that 135 with me and my next boat and just use it as a backup as well. Um, so far, I'm in love with this system. Uh, I always wanted 36 volt trolling batteries. I ran 12 volt for a long time. They were good, but man, 100 amp hours, I would kill. Now, now I have 120 
and I feel like just that little bit uh, will get me through those really long days. I have one AGM over there you can see, and I mounted a little charger right here. And this little charger is just for that AGM, and that, that only runs uh, my power poles and live wells and the big motor. So it's gonna get charged uh, you know, by the alternator of the motor, of course. And, uh, you know, that I won't have to charge that one nearly as often, but it'll also charge pretty quick because it's always going to be charged by this guy when it's running. So graph setup, we'll talk about that real fast. Apex 13, Solix 12, both side imaging units. There is one reason specifically I run this Apex 13, and that is because I don't have to run one of the Ethernet black boxes with this. This unit has two Ethernet ports out the back. So you guys can see right here. A Solix only has one. A Helix is only going to have one. You have two here. So I run one of these cords to this unit, just a little five foot Ethernet. And then I run the other one, a 20 foot cord, up to this unit up here. So when I mark a waypoint on either of those units, side, side image uh, back there, uh, but drop a waypoint, down image, whatever, it doesn't matter. Anytime I drop a waypoint, it's gonna share here. It's gonna share all three graphs. They don't have to go in and talk to a box. I've said it before and you guys have heard me say it, but I feel like that box has ghosts in it, all of them. There's ghosts in every one of those boxes. And I always, I always seem to have problems when I ran the boxes. When I went hardwired ethernet like this, changed everything for me with Humminbird. And then of course we have uh, two Lorances up here. Uh, this bottom one is my forward facing sonar. This is in scout mode. And I don't know that I'll use scout mode all the time. I just think there's certain instances where it's, it's gonna play. So that's it guys. I'm really excited about it. I think it's a great boat. I don't think I'll use all the electronics all the time, but at least I have my options when I want them. And uh, to me, that's really cool that I can just, you know, kind of go on the fly. Like, man, I think 360 is gonna be great right here. Turn it on, start using it and have the advantages of that. And then also when I don't need it, I can even take it off because of that mount. Now we'll go over my truck real quick. You guys see, it's stock, no lift. I've always had a lifted truck. I've had a diesel for years. And I'm so happy to not have to put def fluid or diesel in another truck right now. This, this is a 2023 Tundra. I just got it. Um, we just put the ARE cap from Real Truck on there. If you guys are looking for a great place for truck accessories, bed rug, cap, whatever, uh, check out realtruck.com because they are a monster. They have so much stuff available online for your trucks and uh, really great prices too. So you guys need to check out Real Truck. But there's the back. We have the small five and a half foot bed, uh, Crew Max, nothing crazy, but I love the big doors. <laughs> the only thing I have back there is for a flat tire. I went and pre-practiced and I'm like, oh, I just need to throw a wrench or a couple in there in case I get a flat tire, which I haven't had a flat tire. I should knock on wood really fast. I haven't had one in a while. So hopefully that doesn't happen anytime soon. I uh, got a couple rods in there from when I sold the boat yesterday and can't forget the morning Celsius. Just pounded that on the way here. So, oh, last but not least, we also have the Yakima rod racks, uh, top water rod racks up top so I can fit all my stuff in there. Those things are so light, they're crazy light. I just installed them last night. Super easy to install. And those things have actually, I've loved those. Those have been so great over the years and that's why you're starting to see a lot more guys run them. That's it guys, that's the new rig. That's the whole rig, boat, motor, electronics. If you wanna see more detailed stuff on the electronics, we're gonna have a video on that, but we also leave very soon for the first tournament. This video might come out after the first tournament, but we're going to Toledo Bend and man, it'd be awesome to win the first one. So we're gonna get on the water and actually practice. If we can break through some ice, it looks like the duck hunters might've already done it, uh, but it is cold. I went out yesterday and sold my old boat, 38 degree, 39 degree water temp on Lake Gunnersville. I've never seen that since I've been out here. I've lived here 14 years and I've never seen the back of honeycomb, the back of all reds, as iced over as they are. I don't know if you could have walked out there, but it sure looked like it. 
and uh, I haven't fished like in three weeks, so we need to go. See you guys next time.